All right, in this section, we're going to look at calculating solubilities in the presence of other ions. Okay, what we're all talking about here is a common ion problem, similar to what we talked about when we did buffers, okay, except we involved insoluble and soluble salts. Remember when we are talking about buffers, we had an acid and its conjugate base in the form of a salt. And we said if we wrote the reaction, the reactants would give me the same thing on the product side. Okay, there was a common ion problem, which is an indication since it's an acid base that we had a buffer problem. Okay, same thing here, except we're not talking about acid bases, we're talking about insoluble and soluble salts. Once again, if I write a reaction and reactants equal products, that is a, that's a common ion problem, okay, which means I need to look at it and it's either going to be a buffer or this common ion problem with a, a soluble and insoluble salt. The importance of the KSP becomes apparent when you consider the solubility of one salt and a solution of another having the same cation and anion, anion meaning some common ion. Okay, what's going to happen since you have something at equilibrium and you have an excess of one of the cations or anions, then basically it's going to want to consume that excess and it's going to shift the equilibrium to the left, meaning it's going to form more precipitate. Okay, which means that some of the ions that were in solution before will now be forming solid, which means the molar solubility will also decrease. So by having a common ion, the equilibrium will shift to the left, causing more to precipitate out. Therefore, de thereby decreasing the solubility of the substance. Now, we take advantage of this to get species to precipitate out completely from a solution. Basically, if I want all the calcium out of a solution, I can use its counter ion, the anion, put more of that into it by some other salt, push that equilibrium so far to the left that all that calcium will precipitate out as that, that solid, whatever that solid may be. all the way to the point that we can get it down to zero solubility of a substance if we have that in uh, solution. Okay, We can get all that ion, to, if we have a particular one, to precipitate completely out by shifting that equilibrium. Let's look at this example. Suppose you wish to know the solubility of calcium fluoride in a solution of sodium fluoride. So we have our insoluble salt, calcium fluoride, and now we're going to talk about adding a soluble salt in its presence. If we look at our calcium fluoride equilibrium, you have calcium ions and fluoride ions in a 1 to 2 ratio. There's a certain molar solubility, okay, there's a certain molar solubility associated with that, which we already calculated in the previous example, 2 times 10 to the negative 4th molarity. The question comes up now, what if I add a soluble salt, okay, a soluble salt to this in the form of sodium fluoride? Well, that breaks up into sodium and fluoride ions. Well, I have some excess fluoride ions coming from that soluble salt. So that's going to affect this equilibrium. Since I have an excess of fluoride, that means that equilibrium is going to have to shift to the left. When I shift to the left, that means some of that uh, soluble calcium and soluble fluoride ions, those in solution, are going to have to combine to form more calcium fluoride solid because I'm shifting to the left. And hence, what happens then is my molar solubility the molar solubility of that calcium fluoride will go down. Okay, The calcium fluoride of 2 times 10 to the negative 4th molarity will be less now in the presence of that sodium fluoride than it was in just pure water. The salt contributes the fluoride to the system and shifts the equilibrium causing the solubility of calcium fluoride to be less. The effect is that calcium fluoride will be less soluble than it would be in pure water. So if we were to do a calculation for this, we accept, expect the molar solubility of calcium fluoride to be less than 2 times 10 to the negative 4th molarity. We're going to do this calculation on the next slide. So, what is the molar solubility of calcium fluoride in 0.15 molarity of sodium fluoride? The KSP of calcium fluoride is 3.4 times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, so we're looking at calcium fluoride and sodium fluoride. That's a common ion problem. You can see I have fluoride in both those substances. If I was to write a reaction, the reactants would be the same as the products, which is an indication of some common ion. And we look at it, we're looking at a soluble salt and an insoluble salt, so we're talking about common ion problem. Okay? Now, you should know by the solubility rules what's soluble and insoluble, but since you're given a KSP of calcium fluoride, that should give you a hint that that's an insoluble salt. Okay, and the sodium fluoride was not given one, so that should give you a hint that's a soluble salt. The same that we handled the buffer problems, we're going to handle this one the same way. We'll take the soluble salt and do that first. We take that soluble salt and dissociate it. 
So since I have 0.15 molarity of sodium fluoride and it breaks up 100%, then I know that I have 0.15 molarity of sodium and 0.15 molarity of fluoride. Now what do we do with the buffer? Well then next we handled the hydrolysis of the acid. So in this case we're going to do something similar. We're going to take that dissociation of that insoluble salt and handle that next. Which means I got calcium fluoride breaking up the calcium ions and fluoride ions. Okay. Now if I wanted to know the solubility of calcium fluoride, I know there's a relationship between calcium fluoride and calcium of S solubility in 2S for the fluoride relationship. However, I got to remember that since I have some excess fluoride, that's going to shift this equilibrium to the left, and I'm going to have to account for that. Okay, so I'm going to have to account for that 0.15 fluoride as well. Now, the thing to realize as I'm doing this is that the relationship of 2 to 1 between calcium fluoride and fluoride is based on I need 1 calcium and 2 fluorides to make calcium fluoride. That 0.15 molarity is coming from someplace else. It's an excess from someplace else. That's all I have. I can't do any relationship between 2 to 1. This means I have 0.15 plus that relationship 2 to 1. So i got to account for that within my uh, calculations. Okay. So I'll look at that in my table. I uh, basically have initial amount of calcium none and my initial amount of fluoride coming from that soluble salt. But notice that it is 0.15. I did not multiply by any factor. Okay, that's all I have coming from sodium fluoride. I do not account for the 2 to 1 ratio. That is basically based on the amount of that equilibrium. I have that equilibrium plus this excess amount from fluoride. Okay, so that's not double to anything. It's just the number as it was in my soluble salt. Then I have my relationship of S and 2S for my equilibrium change. And then I add them up and I have S and 0.15 plus 2S. So as we asked in the past, how are these related? Those are related through KSP, since we're talking about the insoluble cell. Write my KSP expression. KSP is equal to the concentration of calcium times the concentration of fluoride squared, which is equal to, we said that calcium is equal to S. And we said 0.15 plus 2S is equal to my fluoride concentration. Okay, And that's squared. The whole thing is squared. I want to get rid of that 2S if possible. I do the same thing we did before. I compare my numeric number to the K, which in this case KSP. I got 0.15. That's the same thing as 1.5 times 10 to the negative 1. Compare that to my KSP of 3.4 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, and that's a difference of 10 tens. We said if it's three or more, we can get rid of the, the X in the past. So I can do the same thing here and get rid of the 2S. Okay, which gets me 3.4 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, so mathematically this changes to S times 0.15 squared. I still got to account for that square. I didn't lose the square. I still got to square that numeric number. Okay, so that's S times 0.15 squared is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the negative 11. Mathematically, divide by my 0.15 squared. So I get 3.4 times 10 to the negative 11 divided by 0.15 squared, which gets me 1.5 times 10 to the minus 9th molarity. Question is, what does S represent? It represents, in this case, my calcium concentration as well as my calcium fluoride, which is what I'm looking for, my molar solubility of calcium fluoride, which is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9 molarity. Now, let's compare that to the previous problem where we had calcium fluoride in pure water. It was 2 time, 2.0 2 times 10 to the negative 4th molarity. Now it's 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9th molarity. Basically, what we're looking at is 100 times more soluble in water. Calcium fluoride is 100 times, 100,000 times more soluble in water than in sodium fluoride. By adding that sodium fluoride in the concentration of 0.15 molarity, we shifted the equilibrium far enough that the solubility went down from 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4 to 1.5 times 10 to the negative 9th. So there's a far less amount of calcium fluoride as, as a soluble salt in solution 
and sodium fluoride as compared to just pure water. Homework 42 asks you questions about common ion problems.